Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we review time that's entered into our timesheet software, and take that uh, take that time and review it, make sure it's in the right spot, and then uh, drop it into a spreadsheet so we can track our budgets on our projects. As I mentioned before, most of the stuff we do here at Redefine Horizons is lump sum, so this isn't super critical, uh, like it would be if you were uh, working on a T&M not to exceed job or a T&M job, but uh, we still want to get an idea how we're doing uh, on our budgets. Um, we're using Tick, Tick Spot for our timesheet software. I, I really like Tick. It's super simple and easy to use for the team members. Um, there's other options. Uh, most of the firms I, I worked at used a software called Deltek, uh, which is way overkill for us, way too complicated. Uh, I looked at another software called Squava. Uh, it looks, um, I like it. I like Squava. Um, we're not going to use Squava yet because we're just not big enough, and I think it adds complexity that we don't need. But um, I think Squava is a is a good first step. Uh, it's a good next step after Tick, uh, but before Deltek. So, you know, if you don't have a fifty or a hundred person firm, I think Deltek's way overkill. Um, Squava is a good solution. I think it, it lets you track things like uh, your utilization rate and does some automated re reporting on how your project budgets are doing. So there, there's something to be said for that. Uh, I just don't think those extra features are worth it. Uh, the extra features in Squava are worth it for our company right now. We're still pretty small. We're only about four or five people. And uh, Danny, my partner, and I have a good idea of what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, I'm, I'm not worried about tracking you people's utilization rates um, we've got good people that we trust that uh, that we know aren't stealing time and they're working hard for us and, and we're investing in their training um, and we have a good idea what they're doing every day and every week so I'm not worried about their utilization rates uh, but you know when you work for bigger firms it's hard to keep track of everybody so some of that information can be useful so this is the kind of the simplest solution that I think is going to work good for us at our current size and maybe even up to to 10 or 15 people as we grow. So I've got the spreadsheet up here. Basically I, I put in a tab for each task. Uh, every tab looks the same. Every worksheet looks the same. So you can see I filled out task two here. I've got the week starting date, the date the work was done, the team member name, team member role, the hourly rate for that role, the number of hours entered, and then the dollar amount. Okay. And so we want to do the same thing here for task three. Then at the bottom, of course, I put in the contract budget and the total. So you can see we're, we've got $3,000 here. Um, this actually isn't accurate. We've got a couple days of field work that aren't in here. Um, so uh, this is actually, we, we, did, we did this right about at what I figured the budget was going to be. So that's good. That means I did a good estimate. Okay, so we're going to do... Uh, Task three here, uh, and actually, I just I just remembered this is actually task five, so let's rename that. And this is task four, and so the the operation that we're going through right now should really be done. You know, I think you should be doing it on a weekly basis. Our payroll is bi-weekly here, but you know, we should be doing this on a weekly basis. So. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and we're going to enter our time. We're going to start with the oldest time. So I shouldn't have any time in here before the week starting the 10th, February 10th. So let's pull up tick and take a look at the time that's been entered on this task. So my uh, CAD tech, Austin, CAD tech and training, he's got some time on the 10th. So he's got three hours on uh, Monday the 10th. So let's go ahead and add his time. So the work was actually done on the 10th. It was done by Austin. He is a junior mapper. We're billing him out at $105 an hour. He's got three hours. And this is just going to be a little formula. Take the hours times the hourly rate. And I just have a no column there. I don't usually use it, but if for some reason um, somebody's done something, you know, we need to make a special note about that time. Maybe it needs to get moved or it doesn't get billed to the client or something. We can put a note in there. 
<clears throat> All right. So Austin's time is in. Okay, then we're jumping down to Danny. Uh, he's got some time on the 10th and the 12th. So on the 10th, uh, he's got some easement drafting time, eight hours. So let's go ahead and put that in. So Danny is an assistant surveyor. His hourly rate is $120 an hour. Okay, he's got eight hours in for that day. Okay, his next entry is on the 12th. He's got six hours in there to finish the easement description. So in this case, the week starting date is the same, but the uh, the actual date the work was done was different. It's the 12th. And we can just copy this down because it's Danny's time again. And he's got six hours in there. Okay. So that takes care of Danny's time. And you can see I've got a bunch of time here. Uh, I'm going to come down. So this time on the 6th, I'm not going to put in because it's for the 10th. Uh, so I've got some time on the 10th. I've got two hours. I've got an hour on the 12th. So I'll put in my name. I am a senior surveyor. I'm billing out at $160 an hour. And let's see, I got uh, two hours on the 10th and one hour on the 12th. Just trying to match the formatting here on these. Okay. So then I've got, uh, looks like I've got some more time on the 12th. So I got another hour, so we can just make that two. And then I got seven on the 13th. So we'll make this two hours, and I got seven hours on the 13th. You know, part of what I'm doing is I, as I go through this is I want to make sure I'm checking this time and take reading these description and making sure stuff got in the right spot, right? And that the hours look reasonable and all this does. Okay, we'll copy this down. Okay, and then we want to make sure this is summoned properly. It's not, so let's go ahead and make that 15. I don't want it to be 115. Let's make it the 15th. Okay, so what this tells me is I've got $5,200 left, and that's good because we got a record of survey. So we're going to burn another three or four grand on the record of survey. So we're, we're about right where we should should be. Okay, um, so this is good. Checked all the time. Don't have any more time and tick. Um, so this spreadsheet is now up to date. I can kind of see where I'm at budget wise. So we'll go ahead and save that. Hey, I made it under 10 minutes, which is great. I like to keep my videos to 10 minutes. So hopefully that helps you guys. Hopefully that'll help uh, Monique and Vanessa who are going to be working with me on some of the billing. So that's how we review time and tick and track our budgets in this spreadsheet. And like I uh, mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, if you want some of this to be automated, you should take a look at Squava. I uh, try a little demo. It seems like pretty good software. Just uh, not quite ready for uh, that level of complexity yet here at, at my company. All right, guys, thanks. We'll do some more kind of business admin uh, training videos in the future. So I appreciate you watching.